Hello Panthers! In today's lecture, we will discuss details about how to write effective emails. Just like any other piece of communication, the message you create for your email will largely depend on the purpose and the audience of the piece. But before we do anything else, we need to look at our email address. What does it say about us? Your email address should be professional, not something funky like sweetie.pie at gmail.com or houston underscore boy at yahoo.com. Keep it simple and straightforward. If possible, try to create an email address with your name. For example, jordan.jackson at gmail.com or jordan underscore jackson at yahoo.com now that we have a more professional email address we need to understand when is it most effective to send an email to get our message across there are many reasons that will fit into this category for example you will send out an email when someone is not reachable via phone or is physically away from you and you do not see them as often. Also, when the information you want to share is not as time sensitive. When communicating via email, remember you cannot expect the other person to respond instantaneously. You have to bear in mind that most officials check their work-related emails only during working hours. So unless your reader has promised otherwise, assume that it may take a few days for him or her to respond to your message. You can also send emails when you need to share some electronic files or documents, or when you are trying to reach a large number of people quickly. Emails also help you keep a trail of all communication. On the other hand, it is best not to send an email but have a one-on-one -on -one discussion if your message is going to be long and complicated or requires additional attention that would be best accomplished face-to-face. -face. Or when the information you plan on sharing is confidential. Keep in mind that emails are never private. Your message could be forwarded to other people without your knowledge. Also, a backup copy of your email is always stored on a server where it can be easily retrieved by interested parties even when you have deleted the message and think it is gone forever. So the lesson is, if you would hesitate to say something to someone's face, do not write it in an email. Now that we know when to or when not to send out an email, let us focus on our audience. It is always helpful to be aware of the expectation of your audience. Making assumptions about your audience's expectations increases the risk that your message or its tone will be misinterpreted. To ensure that your message has its intended effect, ask yourself who is your audience what is your audience's relationship to you for example is the reader your teacher your boss a friend or a stranger how well do you know your audience how would you talk to them in a social situation what do you want your audience to think or assume about you what kind of impression do you want to make once we have a clear understanding of our audience, our next step is to understand the various components of an effective email. The first item to focus on is the subject of your message. Your subject should be short, yet it should be able to successfully convey the main point of your email. For example, instead of saying meeting in the subject line, it is better to say meeting on Thursday, January 5th. This subject line is more descriptive of what your message would convey. 
The next step is to add a greeting. Don't just start writing your message. Begin by appropriately greeting the reader. And when you're not sure how to address the receiver, it is best to keep it formal and avoid offending anyone. For example, Dear Professor Brown, or Hello Mrs. Jackson, or Hi Lisa Smith. If you don't know the name of the person you're addressing, or if the email addresses a diverse group, try something generic, yet be polite. For example, to whom it may concern, Dear members of the selection committee, or hello everyone, it is equally important to sign off your email. Your closing is extremely important because it lets the readers know who is contacting them. Always sign off with your name at the end of your email. If you don't know the reader well, you might also consider including your title and the organization you belong to. For your closing, something brief but friendly or perhaps just your name will do for most correspondents. For example, thank you, best wishes, see you tomorrow, regards, etc. For a formal message, such as a job application, use the kind of closing that you might see in a business letter. For example, sincerely, respectfully yours, etc. Copying individuals on an email is a good way to send your message to other people in addition to the main recipient. However, be aware that when you send a message to more than one address using the carbon copy or CC field, all the recipients of the carbon copies can see all the email addresses in the to and CC fields. On the other hand, blind copying or BCC is a more useful tool when you don't want everyone on the list to have each other's email addresses. If you don't want any of the recipients to see the email addresses in the list, you can put your own address in the to field and use BCC exclusively to address your message to others. However, don't assume that blind copying will always keep recipients from knowing who else was copied. Someone who is blind copied may hit reply all and send a reply to everyone revealing that he or she was included in the original message. Think about your message before you write it. Don't send emails in haste. First decide on the purpose of your email and what outcome you expect from your communication. Then think about the message's audience and what they may need in order for your message to have the intended result. Jot down your points before you start drafting your message. When you are communicating via email, your words are not supported by gestures, voice inflections, or other cues, so it may be easier for someone to misread your tone. For example, sarcasm and jokes are often misinterpreted in emails and may offend your audience. Similarly, be careful about how you address your reader. For instance, beginning an email to your professor or TA with, hey, might be perceived as being rude. If you're unsure how your email might be received, try reading it aloud to a friend to test its tone. Strive for clarity and brevity. Briefly state your purpose for writing the email at the very beginning of your message. Be sure to provide the reader with the context for your message. Cut and paste any relevant text that might make your point clear. For example, a computer error message you received or a part of the assignment prompt that you did not understand. On the other hand, when replying to someone else's email, it can often be helpful to either include or restate the sender's message. Use paragraphs to separate your thoughts. 
Finally, state the desired outcome at the end of your message. If you are requesting a response, let the reader know what type of response you require. For example, an email reply, possible times for a meeting, a recommendation letter, etc. If you're requesting something that has a due date, be sure to highlight that due date in a prominent position in your email. Format your message so that it is easy to read. Use paragraphs to separate thoughts. Bullet important details so that they are easy to pick out. Highlight critical information such as due dates. Proofread the message. Try reading your message out loud. Or if you have the speak or read option on your computer, have the computer read the message to you. This will help you catch any grammatical errors or awkward phrasing that you might otherwise miss. Always be polite in your communication.